enter Is Tutor in Google search bar, the top 8 auto-generated predictions all include references to Rolex. Try it yourself and you'll see suggestions like Is Tutor made by Rolex, Is Tutor the same as Rolex, Is Tutor as good as Rolex, and the most searched, Is Tutor a poor man's Rolex. We're going to unpack this in our hands-on review to find out why people ask these questions in the first place, and we'll also discuss if these should even be questions worth asking anymore with the release of the Black Bay Pro. But first, let's cover some of Tudor's background, which will help us sort this out. German founder Hans Wilsdorf launched Tudor only after successfully turning Rolex into a household name after decades of brilliant marketing, and in the 1940s, Tudor released their first watch with an oyster-style case, a hallmark of Rolex and an innovation of Wilsdorf himself. At its start, Wilsdorf intentionally priced Tudor's well below its already hyper-successful older sibling, and was branded as the accessible everyman's watch, embodying the same exceptional standards as Rolex. His vision quickly caught on, with Tudor naturally leaning on Rolex's infrastructure and parts to build their references under the Wilsdorf Foundation umbrella. Since then, Tudor has grown into its own, stepping out of its older sibling's shadow, becoming mostly independent in tandem with the release of Tudor's first Black Bay in 2012. With models like the Black Bay 58 and the Black Bay GMT released in 2018, Tudor has, for most, increasingly put the poor man's moniker to rest, or at least, that's their clear aim under current management. Released in 2022, the Black Bay Pro marks a decade of true in-house Tudor manufacturing. But does it continue to embody everything great about their new era? Let's find out. Tudor has used the Black Bay vessel to single-handedly herald in a new era for the Swiss watchmaker. As it stands, there's 114 different variants of the Black Bay, between the original Black Bay, the Black Bay 58, the Black Bay Chrono, the Black Bay GMT, and the Black Bay Pro. It's unquestionably the cornerstone of Tudor's modern operation, so we're extremely excited to have the opportunity to see what Tudor's been able to do with the Black Bay Pro after years of in-house progress. Probably the most heralded of Wilsdorf's lasting imprints on Rolex was the integration of a watertight case, or the Oyster case as he named it. Naturally, the wireframe carried over to Tudor's references, and to this day, the Crown Sister brand proudly uses the case framework, with minor tweaks of course, despite their full independence in nearly all of their current models. The Heritage Black Bays and the newest Black Bay Pro are prime examples, all of which use the hyper-recognizable slab-sided shape. Essentially, the Black Bay Pro takes the oyster case of the well-received Black Bay 58, added a fixed stainless steel bezel, changed some dial colors, and jacked up the vertical height or thickness profile. Which leads us to the most controversial element of the Black Bay Pro, the thickness just shy of 15mm. The Black Bay 58 measures at just 11.9, so with the incredible success of the 58, what's with the 3mm increase? Poking around, there's an equal camp who hate it or love it, the latter espousing most criticism as completely overblown. We have a theory on to why this dimension may be a bit polarizing. Sure, there is a sizable increase from the Black Bay 58 everyone was used to, but also the Black Bay Pro slab sides are unbroken, no chamfered edges, cuts, or angled machining to break up the profile, and it doesn't fly under the radar with a full mirror polish, so it really stands out. Our advice? Find a way to get past it. Apologies for being blunt, but if you're hesitant, the easy choice is the Black Bay 58. If you lean into the tough looking all stainless steel finish of the Black Bay Pro with its fixed 24 hour Explorer 2 leg bezel, it has a ton to offer. And the 47mm lug to lug in proportion to the 39mm case keeps it tidy on the wrist anyway. Functionally, Tudor rolls over the 58's 200 meters of water resistance and the rose embossed screw down crown on the Pro's right hand side and a beautiful, crystal clear, and highly domed sapphire crystal. Interestingly enough, you don't need an eagle's eye to notice a key detail in the Pro's dial configuration Tudor left out of the name, the bright yellow 4th GMT hand. Now, there exists a Black Bay GMT by name. It's a 41mm reference most closely related to the 39mm Black Bay 58, but not a Black Bay Pro GMT by name. We're seriously wondering why Tudor didn't tack on GMT to the end of the Black Bay Pro's official title, as it's a significant inclusion and most certainly an improvement. In any case, the Black Bay Pro's GMT isn't just any GMT, it's a true GMT, meaning you can adjust the hour hand independently for quick time zone adjustments. Sub $5,000 this is virtually unheard of apart from the Longines Spirit Zulu time, and a straight up value proposition on its own. The Black Bay Pro dial also switches around some finishing from its closest Black Bay sibling, from gilt framed indices and hands to all white framing, rendering each element a hair larger, and carries over the yellow color scheme of the GMT hand onto the dial text above the 6. The in-house caliber also builds in a date at the 3 o'clock position, adjustable with the crown. A major part of Tudor's independence can be attributed to establishing in-house calibers. With the Tudor North flag in 2015, which was subsequently discontinued after a quick six-year stint, yes, we're disappointed, Tudor debuted the MT, short for Manufacture Tudor 5621 movement. Up until this release, Tudor was still running to Ida, or, of course, to Rolex. 
The Black Bay Pro uses the MT5652, and the Young 26 Jewel movement packs a punch. COSC Master Chronometer Certification, backed up by a 4Hz beat rate, an impressive 70-hour power reserve, a true 24-hour adjustable GMT, and a date function. In 2018, with the release of the Black Bay GMT, the self-winding automatic MT5652 took the stage, and it's currently being used in both the Black Bay GMT and the Black Bay Pro GMT. For any real diehards, the 5652 uses a bi-directional, centrally mounted rotor, a variable inertia balance, hacking seconds, and a silicon balance spring. It's not as if the MT calibers were an overnight success for Tudor, as they had Rolex's backing for quite some time, but only a few years out of the gate and they're making major strides with the internals to create their own identity after having left the nest. The Black Bay Pro currently offers three strap configurations at various price points. Classically, we'd recommend the stainless steel version, carried over from previous releases, especially since it sports the insanely convenient quick adjustment system Tudor rolled out with a special edition of the Black Bay 58 in 2021, the T-Fit clasp. If you're not familiar, it essentially swaps the classic micro-adjustment points of a regular bracelet with a quick adjustment system that you can hone in without the use of any tools, as it slides back and forth with pressure until you've achieved the perfect fit. Convenience aside, regular watch wearers will know that wrist size fluctuates with temperature, diet, time of day, the list goes on. And often a metal bracelet isn't always the best option to accommodate these cycles, since they are notoriously difficult to fine tune which may mean using a NATO or rubber strap during seasons or times of the year when your wrist size fluctuates, and then back to a metal bracelet at the mean. The T-Fit class, however, allows for year-round use, since you can quickly dial in the micro-adjustments any time of day in any situation in mere seconds, by releasing the clasp itself, giving the links slight pressure downward, and then pushing or pulling to adjust the fit. Tudor also stocks two other 20mm strap options with matching yellow accents to go along with the dial color scheme, a hybrid leather and rubber strap with standard outline stitching, and a black fabric strap with a central yellow band. Alright, so can Tudor's success be attributed at all to nepotism, i.e. Rolex? Alright, maybe not fully, but why did Tudor wait so long to leave home for the first time? Tudor did experience a bit of a slump in sales for a period of time and even pulled their watches from the US market before a resurgence in 2019. Be that as it may, they've undeniably rounded a corner in the past decade and continue to innovate. The Black Bay Pro is only the latest example. In our opinion, we should start changing the language we use when discussing Tudor. We don't think there's anything wrong with acknowledging their past or comparing them to Rolex, but perhaps a better way to describe Tudor instead of a poor man's Rolex would be a true Swiss heritage watch with Rolex build quality.